And good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Kobena Hansen, and I'm in Abidjan. Um, let me first start by saying that welcome to everybody here. Um, and again, for those, since it's good morning in Abidjan, I know it's good afternoon some places else, so good day to everyone. Uh, this is the second webinar in the IDEF series and titled Present to Persuade, Storytelling with Data Visualization. Uh, quick, quickly, I'll do some housekeeping and then I'll introduce our speakers, our presenters today. Um, so first thing I would like to request from everybody is if you already haven't muted your mic, if you'd be kind enough to do so, would really appreciate it, such that we cut out any background um, noise that comes in. So if you could mute your mics, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Then the second thing that I thought I'd draw attention to is uh, because we're using Skype Enterprise and not Zoom, um, I cannot see you if you wave your hand. So it would mean that if you need to intervene, um, you'd kindly need to sort of key it into the dialog box and then, and then let me know. That said, um, the presenters would be grateful if we allow them to run through the presentation, which should take maybe 40 minutes max, and then would open it up for question and answer session. And what we'll do is that for the questions that have already been typed in, um, we'll start with those, but if somebody has an intervention they want to make or share an experience, if you draw my attention to it, I will sort of like let you, I would alert the presenters and then you can unmute your mic and share your experience with us and everybody else. All right. So we have two wonderful presenters today, uh, Nima Aya and Wairimu Macharia. Uh, Nima is the founder and director of Policy, which is a civil technology organization based in Kampala, Uganda. Um, she's worked on large-scale mobile and digital projects across Sub-Saharan Africa as part of TTC Mobile, which previously was Hex to Change, and Viam, which was Voto Mobile. Um, Wairim, on the other hand, is a very seasoned digital professional with a background in comms, technology, and research. She's a co-founder at Digital Service Academy and the digital lead at Afrobarometer, where she basically is the one that makes all the compelling data visualizations and makes everybody, myself included, come to appreciate and understand the data in a meaningful way. All right. So again, for those who've just joined, good morning. If you're in Abidjan or in, you're in this part of Sub-Saharan Africa, and good day if you're from some part else on the globe. Um, I will, at this point, pass the mic to Nima and Wairimu, and basically they will run us through this interesting webinar, Present to Persuade Storytelling with Digital Visualization. Nima, Wairimu. Thank you so much, Kobena. Can you hear me? We do. Yes, we do. You do? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for the confirmation. All right, everyone. Good morning. Um, we're very excited to be a part of this webinar. As Kobena mentioned, we are part of Digital Services Academy which provides blended learning courses to teach different data topics. As you know, today we'll be talking specifically about data visualization, which is a topic very close to our Rimu and my heart. Um, and so we're talking about how do we take our data to insight and to action, because nowadays all of us collect a lot of data. So if we start by saying, let's talk about data. Data is everywhere. It's now ubiquitous. Um, between sending uh, text messages to our relatives, our location information, 
our transaction data, we're even collecting data on our bodies, we're collecting data on our behaviors, and this data is being used to make some very major decisions. But of course, as an organization, we also collect a lot of data. So we wanted to talk about what are we doing with this data. But first, stepping a little backwards, advocating for a cause using data and visualization is not something new. We're not just talking about data because now we all have mobile phones in our hands. This is actually something that has existed for quite a while. And I want to give you two quick examples. Uh, the first one is this lady. I don't know if any of you know who she is. Her name is Florence Nightingale. And she is popularly known as the Lady with the Lamp. And she is famous for her work helping wounded soldiers in the Crimean War in the mid-1800s. And that's kind of what we know about her. But in reality, she was actually one of the best statisticians of her time and maybe ever. Um, she would go on to develop what we now know as modern nursing practices. And I want to show you one of the amazing data visualizations that she had created. And this is called the di Diagram of the Causes of Mortality. And if you look at the little red wedges on the diagram, those are the people who died in actual war and battle. And if you look at the bigger part of the wedge, it's kind of blue and gray. Those are the soldiers who died from preventable diseases. So here, the actual enemy is not the Russians who are killing their soldiers. The actual enemy is preventable diseases like cholera and typhus. And Florence Nightingale was able to put this into an easy data visualization and to share it with the general of the army, and that made them change their practices. And as a result, she saved the lives of about two-thirds of the army. So by just visualizing this information, which she was trying to convince them of, they actually made decisions that impacted human lives. Here is another example. So I studied public health, and this gentleman pops up all the time. His name is John Snow. And he was an epidemiologist. And back in the day, a lot of people were dying from cholera. But people didn't know what the cause of cholera was at the time. So here's this little comic that had been published in the newspaper showing how the London Board of Health was hunting around looking for what was causing cholera. So you can see in the pictures, they're looking all over. Is it the animals? Is it the windows? But what Jon Snow did was, in fact, to just map out every single case of cholera in the city of London. And once he did that, it became apparent that certain locations were hotspots and had much higher cases of cholera. And they were able to identify these were actually locations around pumps. And once they turned off those pumps, the cases of cholera started to fall again. And so it was identified that contaminated water from these pumps was actually the source of cholera at that time. So here you can see he has mapped out the data, he's put each person as a line, and this helped in making decisions on how to cure cholera in the city of London back in the day. So why is visualization so powerful? And I really like this quote by Hans Rosling, who really can be called the father of data viz. Um, he's now passed on, but he wrote this beautiful quote that says, few people will appreciate the music if I just show them the notes. Most of us need to listen to the music to understand how beautiful it is. But often that's not how we present statistics. We just show the notes. We don't play the music. And I thought that that's really beautiful to show exactly what we're trying to do. Yes, we have data, we have statistics, but are we showing people the music? Are we showing them what they need to see? Um, and the other one is by Stephen Jay Gold, which is the mind is basically a pattern-seeking machine. We always want to see patterns. We talk about stereotypes and how it's negative to stereotype people, but that's how the brain works. We need patterns to understand the world around us, and then based on that, we can say stories about the world. So let's just do, jump right into what is data visualization. It's at the tip of everyone's tongue these days, but what is it really? It really comes down to presenting data visually to better understand patterns, trends, and correlations. And I'm going to show you some examples. So starting off, let's just learn very quickly what are the basic chart types, because a chart is a fundamental unit of a data viz. Um, so starting off, we have four main types. The first type is categorical, and this is the one that we tend to use the most. And it is the comparison of categories 
and distributions of quantitative values. So think about a bar chart, for example. That is a categorical type of chart because you have categories and you're comparing their quantitative values. The second type of chart is relational. And here you're graphing relationship between different variables to explore their correlations and connections. So what is the relationship between variable A, B, and C, for example? The other two types are temporal, and this is quite simple. It's just showing trends and activities over time. So a very basic timeline is a temporal chart. And the last one is becoming more common these days because we have better GPS and mapping tools. Um, and it's called spatial, and that's when you use maps to show patterns that can then give you more information that you're looking for. So let's just see um, some quick examples of these type of charts. As I mentioned, the first one is categorical, and it's a very basic bar chart. The second is relational, and this is a sand key chart showing you the correlation between three different variables. Then we have temporal, showing us trends over time. So you can see there's a timeline at the bottom, and there's events on that timeline. And the fourth one is spatial. As you know, we see lots of these types of maps these days, so it's a basic mapping pattern. And now let's just dive into some more concrete examples of what I've been talking about on these charts. So I mentioned a bar chart, so let's look at an example of a bar chart. And a bar chart is essentially a chart that has rectangular bars, they can be vertical or horizontal, and the length of each bar is proportional to the value that it represents. So on one axis is um, the categories, and on the other axis is the discrete value. So this is a very simple chart. It shows you the top 10 most used emojis on Facebook. And we don't even have values. We don't actually know how many millions of people are using it, but just by looking at it, we know that the crying smiley face is the most used emoji, and then the next most used one is the heart smiley face, and that gives you a general idea of how emojis are used day to day. The second kind of chart I'm going to show you is a stacked bar chart. Here is a basic example. An example that I really like. So a stacked bar chart is not a multi-set or a simple bar chart as I showed you. It is in fact multiple data sets on top of one another to show a larger category divided into smaller categories and how much each of those smaller categories is related to the entire amount. So this chart is called, it's actually a video and it's quite interesting to watch. It's called, Watch How Immigration in America Has Changed in the Last 200 Years. And so not only can you see how much of the immigration has changed, for example, what was it in 1860 compared to the year 2000, but you can also see within each category where they were coming from. So, for example, the biggest amount of Africans went to, the, to America in the year 2000. And then something happened after the year 2000 and immigration was totally slashed. And the numbers in 2010, 2011, 2012 are, are much lower, basically. So that's an example of a stack bar chart. Uh, the next one is a scatter plot chart. And it's quite interesting because you're able to show multiple characteristics within one chart. A scatterplot chart uses Cartesian coordinates, so that's your x-axis at the bottom and your y-axis vertically, to display values of two variables for one set of data. So one value determines the position on the x-axis and the other on the y-axis. So in this example, I'm showing you movies released in 2016, and I can show you just on one chart how much budget was taken to make each movie. I can show you how much money each movie made, and by changing the color of each dot, I can also show you how well the movie did. So I can show you multiple things just on one chart by using a scatter plot chart. The next chart is quite common. It's a line chart. And a line chart shows you information as a series of data points connected by a straight line. It's similar to a scatter plot, but the points are connected by a straight line. And I really think this chart is interesting because it asks, what happened to women in computer science? In the 80s, women were studying in somewhat equal proportions medicine, law, physical science, and computer science. And then something happened in the mid 80s and women just dropped out of computer science. So here the chart is showing you what happened, but it's not answering the question of why did that happen? 
And I have my own hypothesis that that's kind of when video games came out and it was marketed more to boys rather than girls. But that's just my hypothesis. I just think it's very interesting to see exactly when and where this divergence happened. The next chart is a pie chart, which I feel is overused. Everyone uses pie charts all the time. Um, a pie chart is just a circle that's divided into wedges. And the arc of the circle, the arc length, is proportional to the quantity that it represents. And in the data biz world, pie charts are very controversial because some people hate it and some people love it. And the fact is that humans are not very great at determining what the angle of each wedge is. And so we're not actually very good at knowing if wedge D is bigger than wedge C. Like here it's kind of apparent, but sometimes it can get quite confusing when we're looking at pie charts. So this chart is um, showing you that in the whole world, only 10% of the income earned in agriculture goes to women, and the rest of it goes to men. So it's very simple. It just has one, one wedge coming out of it, just to show you an example of how you can play around with art to get your point across. Um, the next, second last one is a heat map chart. And a heat map is basically a matrix, and the color of each box shows you the value of that data point. And this is a really cool data viz. It says, when do fatal crashes happen? So if somebody is drinking alcohol, when do these crashes happen in one calendar year? And on the left side, you can see that we have the 12 months of the year. And on the horizontal axis, we have each hour of the day. And so if you look at the data, it says that most accidents related to alcohol happen between 1 AM and 3 AM which of course makes sense. That's what we kind of know happens. But if you look at the summer months of June, July, and August, some of these accidents actually happen earlier because there's more sunshine where this data was taken. So it shows you very granular data, but in a very well represented way. And this is the last chart I'm going to show you. It's called a clustered force layout. And a clustered force layout uses nested circles to show hierarchy and to compare values. So you can effectively show the proportion between different elements through their area and their position in the structure. So here's a good example. And the, the title of the chart is, How Deadly is Ebola Compared to Other Diseases? Because Ebola gets a disproportionate share of um, coverage in the media. But then if we were to actually see what diseases are killing people the most, you would see that it's malaria, it's tuberculosis. And so in this chart, we have grouped the different um, diseases by what they're caused by. So if it's a virus, it's in green. If it's a bacterium, it's in orange. And then the size of each bubble is the number of people who die each year. So just by one chart, you can easily compare for example, typhoid to influenza to measles to cholera, and it gives you, in one sweeping glance, a full picture of what's going on with some of these preventable diseases. And just to get creative, there's other elements we can work with. So we're not just um, we're not restricted to just using charts all the time. There's other elements you can use, for example, icons and numbers, um, and it's very easy to get your point across by just putting the two elements together. You can use pictorial fractions. These are really great when you're making infographics or you're making fact sheets. And it helps us get a quick idea. So if somebody says three out of five people, you know, you sort of have to imagine that in your head. But if you show someone these proportions on a paper like this, it's easy to understand, OK, it's these many people that this is happening to. And it's, it's much nicer than just writing it out, for example. And you can use any type of icon to represent your information. Another good one to always use is maps. There's a lot of new tools these days that allow you to make maps really quite easily. So I definitely encourage you to use maps as much as possible to get your, your insight across. Um, another good one is quotes. So I love data viz. Putting in quotes gives it more of a human element. Somebody you feel connected to the information because somebody is giving you their first hand account, for example. All right, so that's enough about talking about charts. I wanted to give you some examples and case studies of what we're working on. So Create Your Kampala is a project that we run at Policy. And the project is help, it wants to understand what is public perception of government services in Kampala. 
And we want people to feel empowered that, you know, that we can take some matters into our hand to create the city of our future. And so as part of this study, we talked to 1,000 people in three areas in Kampala, and we worked together with them to create data visualizations on their level, and then we painted murals across the city based on that data. Um, so here's one of the murals that we painted, and here are some of us working. So you can see on the top left-hand side, we worked with them to sort of visualize this information. We asked them about their opinions, we did focus groups, and then we did exercises with them to see how the community was understanding this data. And we had some really good discussions. We worked with local governments, we worked with the police, and we got some really rich data out of it. And so we were wondering, how can we give this data back in a way that's easy and understandable? And so we used a tool called Flourish, which is free, and Warimu will talk a little bit more about that. So in this chart, each circle represents one person that we spoke to. So in this circle, there's about a thousand people, and this is available on our website, and everything is totally interactive. So in this little dialog box on the right, if I filter by gender, you can see that my data has separated into two different categories. So now we, have, we can see how many women we spoke to and how many men we spoke to just by clicking on our filter. But what if you want it to be even more clear? So just online, on, on the same dashboard, you can um, change the color by gender, and so now it's more clear which dots are female and which dots are male. For the next step, I wanted to see how do our respondents differ by age. So now not only does each dot represent one, part, one participant, the size of each dot represents the age of that person. <coughs> And now we can do all sorts of comparisons with our information. So for example, here I have separated the information based on average monthly income. And you can see that women are more likely to earn less money than men. So 99,000 Ugandan shillings is about $30. So a very big chunk of our women make less than $30 a month. And that's very clear and evident from this data that's split out to show you this. The other thing we could see, for example, is the actual indicators. So what is satisfaction with healthcare services? And you can see that this proportion is similar for men and women. And overall, people are very unsatisfied or not satisfied with the health services that they're offered. So it's a very simple tool. It's totally free. You can embed it on your website. And then anyone can come to your website and interact with the data on their own terms and explore whatever they need to explore. So I definitely encourage you to try it out. But I think for now, I will pass on the webinar to Wairimu, and she will talk more about Afrobarometer and show you a live demo of how you can create your own infographics. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. And we can see your slide. Can you hear me? Yes, you're very clear. Yes, we yes, can. Great. So my name is Rarimo Azneem said, and um, I work with an organization called Afrobarometer. So Afrobarometer is a pan-African research institution which conducts surveys on issues of democracy and governance in more than 35 African countries. So as you can imagine, obviously they have data that um, dates back to 1999. So it's a load of data. So when I started working with them about a few years ago, one of the main challenges that they had was how to better visualize the information that they have, because they have a very rich data set uh, of up to 20 years. So one of the things that we explored, obviously, was data visualization. So if you look at something like this, so this is based on a report they released recently on migration trends in Africa. So one of the ways that uh, they wanted to visualize the information was to use uh, data visualization and infographics to better convey the information because it, uh, there's lots of data for 35 countries. So as you can see here, they, they looked at all adults and you see it's visualized in a way that is easy to understand. So and uh, here they use the age and education. Then, as Nima talked, uh, talked about, it's very easy to make use of uh, things like icons. It makes the information richer in terms of uh, how you visually perceive it. 
And let me give you another example. So something like this, you can make use of uh, pie charts to just visualize information in a different way. And some of these, um, so for example, uh, this was a survey done last year, just before the pre, just before the elections in Zimbabwe. As you can see, we made use of a lot of infographics and pie charts. Of course, pie charts have their own controversy, but these were very critical in conveying very uh, important information uh, based on the pre pre election survey that was done in Zimbabwe. So one other way that um, Hi, what, makes can you sorry? put can you put your presentation into full presentation mode? Some people cannot see it. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, great. So I was just talking about the different charts and how Afrobarometer visualizes information differently, just to make sure that the data is better, easier to understand, easier to consume. And as you can see here, there's use of pie charts. Here, there's use of icons to just represent. So, for example, in this uh, infographic, you can see the immigration, the migration trends within Africa. So, Afrobarometer is perceptions data. So, as you can see here, there's usually the the idea that a lot of Africans want to leave the continent. But based on this, you can actually see a lot of Africans want to move within the region, which is actually 29%, and lesser percentages. Uh, to, to other different parts of the world. So this is very easy to consume the information and share it. And if you take a look at this as well, uh, we made use of pie charts here to just visualize um, how citizens, are citizens able to access different information from the different, so like for example for business registration, are people able to find that information easily? As you can see 55% said yes. The school budget, 39% said yes. So this is how we visualize generally information, perceptions, data from Afrobarometer using different charts. And I was giving an example of last year when Zimbabwe had their pre-election survey. So Afrobarometer went into the field to ask um, participants, uh, the, the citizens, what they feel about the upcoming elections. And as you can see, we came up with this based on the results of the survey. and. In early May, 82% were saying they have to be careful about what they say. And in early July, just before the elections, you can see the number went down to about 76%. So these were very critical in informing um, not just the people who are vying for different seats, but also it, it was good to see how the political climate was playing out in Zimbabwe. So they also make use of, um, they tap into what we call the international days. So depending on the kind of data that is currently available, so you can see like for this one, uh, we put this out during the International Day of the Girl Child. 42% of Africans say that men should have priority over women when jobs are scarce. So putting out key information pieces, we make use of a lot of infographics and sharing that kind of information. Uh, makes it very easy to consume and to remember. This is another example of migration from people in Morocco. So they were asked if you were to move to another country, where would you most likely go? So you can see the percentages vary and you can see this is Morocco here. So it just shows the migration patterns for people within uh, from Morocco. So I wanted us to, to try out a, a tool uh, that we heavily use at Afrobarometer. It's called Infogram. Um, Nima had talked a bit about the different kinds of tools. Infogram is very easy to use. There's a free version and there's a paid version. So what I'm going to do right now is actually go onto Infogram. So anyone who's walking along with me, you can just quickly log in. I had shared some links. Um, let me share that now. So these are the links if you want to access um, uh, Infogram and see exactly what it is I'm creating from scratch. So let's do this. So let me log on quickly. So like I mentioned, there's a free version and there's a paid enterprise version. So currently I'm going to log on to the enterprise version that I, that I use just to give you a feel of exactly how it works. So this is the workspace. 
So immediately you log on, for a new account, obviously there will be no reference or any sort of data visualization, it will just be blank. So once you create it, it's called a project and you can create new projects using existing templates. So as you can see here, we have infographic templates, reports templates, slides, dashboards. Um, if you want to create something for social media, you can just click on the different, the different ones and it'll give you access to them. Um, so for this one, let me just pick any of these. So let me create, say, a so you have the option of using a blank template or you can use pre-existing templates. So for this one, I'm going to quickly use a pre-existing template to recreate um, an infographic I had worked on a bit earlier. So let me see which one I can use. So, and as you can see here, the different ones, you can create one using a dashboard. Then you can just name it AFDB. And you can just quickly name it and create it. So this is a blank template. So if you look at the sidebar, you have the option of adding in text, you can add in a chart, you can add in maps, you can add in graphics, and you can add in different shapes and icons. So for this specific one, I had some data I had prepared, which I can quickly plop in. So you can add, what I want to first do is create um, a shape. So when you click on the left side, it, it opens up the sidebar and you're able to see the different shapes that you can actually use within your infographics. So you can click on that, then it adds it directly into your workspace. So you can stretch that out quickly. And if you want to add some text, you can quickly add that in by clicking on the text area, then it puts in the search bar, then Africa development. So once you create that, you can quickly move it around. So you can always refine the, the different sections. So if you look up, if you look on the right hand side, you're able to see where how to size your text, you can see you can change the size, you can change the color, you can make it white, uh, you can also change the color of the bar at the top, you can change it maybe to blue or gray, and you can increase the size of the text, maybe 40, or gray areas. and you can center it. So if you want to add something like say an image or let's say for example you want to add uh, the logo for africa development bank you can you can quickly add it in so you, you can add graphics so there are pre-existing ones you have icons which are already built into infogram or you can actually upload them yourself so it's very easy it's very quick i've already pre-uploaded the africa development bank logo so i can quickly double click on that then add it in then you can resize it using the square or the corner around by just dragging it. So it's pretty straightforward and you can quickly do it. So let me add a map. What I'm trying to recreate, let me give you an example of what I was trying to recreate. So this I had worked on earlier, so I'd like to recreate something similar to this. So you can quickly add in a map from the left hand side. So I wanted the map of Africa. So if you want to search for something specific, like an American, uh, a city in US, uh, a city in Africa, you can quickly do that by searching through it here. So right now I just want the Africa map, so I just search Africa and it gives me the option of the African map. I double click it and it's, it's added directly onto my project. 
So it's very easy to customize this. You can change the color, but first you have to select it by clicking on it once. Then if you look at the right hand side, you have the map properties, the color, the value. Uh, you can also change the fonts within the, the map if you have um, a legend in there. So if you want to change the map properties, for now I want to change the color to make it look similar to this one, the green color of uh, Africa Development Bank. So I can quickly do that uh, by changing the color, by clicking on it. My properties, color. Then I can select the color. So you have, you have the option of actually putting in a color code or using the pre-existing colors that are already presented to you. So I'll just use this one at the top and it's quickly added into my map. So I want to get rid of this legend. So I can come again to the right hand side. So you have the option of turning it on and off. So you can just quickly do that and you see it automatically disappears. So if you want to change the data within the map, so you can come to this side and actually edit the data. But first you have to pre-select the map. So if you click on that, you will see the border on the outside. Then you click on edit data. It gives you the option to change the information within that within the map itself. So this is pre-populated by Infogram in terms of the coordinates so that you don't have to worry about. As you can see, it's grayed out. But if you if you want to create something very specific, like an area that's not currently within Infogram, you can actually do that if you have the actual coordinates. But for now, I'm just going to use the Africa map. And if you want to change the values, because you can see this is a heat map, depending on the value that you put in here, you can see it has different shades. So some are darker, some are lighter, and some are grayed out where there's no information. So for this specific one, I wanted to show that um, the, the areas where Africa Development Bank works. So if you look at this one, um, it's green in some areas, in some areas where, okay, it, it's not really, I didn't have the exact data, but it, it, it gives you a demonstration of what you can actually do when you have the actual data to use for this. And if you want to change the label, so for example, if in Algeria you want to say, uh, or maybe if you hear, let's see, maybe coffee. So if you have that, you can just quickly put that in. Maybe you just want to present what is grown in those areas. If you hover on Ethiopia, you'll see it shows coffee. You can remove the grouping. The grouping is... It works well when you have different groups that you want to present, but for this, in, in our case, I can just delete that because... There's not good to add to the five sector, the priority, Africa Development Bank. And in order to do that, I had a data set ready. So what I quickly did was um, you come here to add a chart, then you can select the chart you want. The beauty of Infogram is that they already put in some dummy data, so you can see it's created. Dummy data. All you need to do is now select the bar graph itself, edit it, then change the data on the back end here. So I'll come to my, um, my chart, select the data, and I put it in here. See, it's very easy to use. As long as you have the data ready, it's very easy to use and create uh, different types of infographic charts. So for this one, you can also change the color. It gives you the option on the right hand bar. So you can change the color to the green that we have used previously. And you can actually make use of icons as well. So if you come here, um, if you have graphics, you can have graphics. So here are the icons. It has a very wide selection. So if you want something specific, you can actually type it into the search bar. So let's say food, you can type food and you'll get a different icon for food and you can add it in quickly into, let's say, let's use this one, uh, Feeding Africa. 
you can resize it by moving the corners and moving it into the specific area that you want. And you can quickly change the color by selecting the specific icon. And maybe let's, for this instance, let's change it to white. And you can also do that for the same thing for the other sections. So let's say something about power. So you, you can just choose something that represents what it is you want to visualize. So for example, now power, and I can move it into this section, resize it by moving in the corners and changing the color. So it's pretty, it's pretty quick and simple. So if I can quickly go back to this one. Um, so let me see. So you can quickly add the icons and uh, make it visually appealing. So if you wanted to have the, the data display easily on, onto your chart, you can come here again. If you look at your um, data format, chart properties, you can show values. So when you say show values, it starts to display them there within the graph itself. And if you want to show them outside of the bar, you can again select that and say show values outside. So that means we have to move the icons so that it aligns properly. See, coming together very quickly, it's pretty simple. So another one of the, it has different, it has different charts, so you can always select. And if you're unsure of which charts to use, there's always the question mark at the bottom. It gives you an idea of how to use the chart and for what kind of data. So if you click on that, it gives you a tool tip and you're able to see quickly, um, like for example, this line graph, it tells you it's for comparing multiple items or, or a few categories. So just depending on what you want to use, you can always talk about the chart itself and it will tell you exactly what the chart is, can be used for. For the bar graphs, the same thing. You always use the tool tip here and it gives you information about how it can actually be used. So for the next one, I use the tree map. I can quickly then click on it, then it's quickly added in. You can reduce that, then reposition it into the place where you want. Then again, you can edit the data. So I have an existing data set here. You can copy it. It's very quick. Delete this. Then you can quickly add this. And you can see it automatically populates it for you based on the data that you just put into the, the data section. Then you can always change the color by selecting the, the, the tree map itself. Then the color, and you can decide on which colors you want to use for the different sections of your tree map. So, and you can also add uh, images. So if you look here, we have the option of um, adding images. So depending on what you want to add, so they are existing. So this, um, there are stock uh, photos within this section. So, and if you want to add your own, you can always click upload. Then it will add for you the different images. So for this specific exercise, I had like sample images that's taken from your annual report. I take that. And it adds it in. And you can resize by pulling in sections. You can add images and you can also add text. So I wanted this to be a quote to be similar to what that was done here. So you can quickly add text. So you have the option of body text and title text. So specifically for this one I wanted caption text because it's a quote. So what I did is just click caption text and it gives you, you see it adds the infogram. See it's pretty quick. And always add more pictures. You can actually, um, 
you can actually add it to, let me see, let me add the second one, resize it, and then move it to the specific section. So the beauty of infogram is that it can help you even with alignment. So if you, if you move the image around, it gives you like an indication of how the images are going to align. If you look at these lines, once you click on it, you can see and, and try to move it. You can see the lines are trying to align your images so that they are perfectly in order so that you can see now it looks pretty well aligned and you can add another quote text inside insert caption yes so you see how easy it is uh, to add the different information within the the, the infogram and um, as you can see, this was the final result, and it's pretty quick and simple to actually do this. This took me all of 20 minutes. As long as you have your data and you're, you know exactly what it is you want to communicate, it's very easy to do this. And once you're done, you have the option to download. So for the free version, you can't download, but for the, the enterprise version, you, you can click download and you can select what kind of quality you want. So if you want high resolution, if you want something for the web, if you want something high resolution to print, uh, you have the option to do all that. So for those who would even want to embed on their website, it's very easy. Uh, once you click for web and um, you can uh, you get an, uh, you get an embed code. Uh, so if you look at this, if you want to share it directly, you can actually do that. You can make it public on the web. So it gives you various options to play around with. So you can embed it, you can share it on social media, and you can also print it and have it as a fact sheet the, to present to policymakers. It makes it very easy and quick to use. As long as you have your data ready, it's very simple. Um, and now over to Nima uh, to talk a bit about the different, the, the other different tools. Um, that we, we have at our disposal. So that was Infogram I was talking about. So you might want to talk a bit more about the other ones. So there's Raw Graph, Data Wrapper, Flourish, and Tableau. So over to you, Nima. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Excellent. All right. Thanks for that, Warimu. So as Warimu just showed you how to use Infogram, there is a free version and there is a paid version that you can either have as an individual or as a company and then you share that account. Um, there's another really good one that we like called Raw Graphs. So the web link is rawgraphs.io. It's completely free. It does not save your data in any way. And it makes very beautiful and artsy visualizations. You just have to paste your data into the little um, dialog box. And then it shows you all the different options that you can use to make really, really beautiful charts. Um, I definitely say just try, try, try to use it. If you have any questions, definitely reach out to us. Another good one that's used a lot by journalists is Data Wrapper. Very similar to Infogram, very many of this, the same kind of um, Functionalities, um, also another option for, every, for all of you. As I mentioned earlier in my slides, the chart that I had used in Create Your Compiler was created on Flourish. So it's flourish.studio. And the types of charts that Flourish can make are interactive. So whenever someone comes to your website, they're able to play around with the data on their own and explore it. And they have a lot of different, very creative kinds of charts. So. It's quite intuitive, also suggest you try it out if you have the time. They do have a free and a paid version as well. Another big up and comer is public.tableau.com. This is the free version of Tableau, but because it's free, any data you use will be public. So any dashboard you make will be available publicly. You can also buy Tableau for your organization and um, it's a very powerful tool when you're dealing with a lot of data, it really helps you. That's really the key of Tableau is like if you have massive amounts of data, you can't really use Infogram for something like that. You would need a more powerful tool such as Tableau, which would be based on your computer systems. 
And then from there, the functionality, like the things you can do on Tableau are just amazing. I've seen so many infographics that just constantly blow my mind. But there is a bit of a learning curve, so it's not one of those platforms you can just open and start using. You do need a little bit of coaching on how to use it. All right, so this is the last part of our presentation. We wanted to leave some time for you to ask questions. So I'm just going to quickly go through this so that we have time at the end. So best practices for creating data visualization. The first one that we always try to get people to do, to do is to know your audience. What is, who is the information intended for? Um, for example, one tip that I have is to make use of personas. So basically have somebody in mind that you want to present this data to and create everything that you do with that person in mind. For example, are you using your infographic or your data viz in an online space or in the physical space? Are you talking to politicians or are you presenting it at a local community meeting? It's not a one size all situation. So you definitely have to tailor whatever you're doing down to your audience for it to have the most effectiveness. The second one is show, don't tell. Sometimes you'll see data viz and charts that just have so many, so much writing on the sides or above. And that's kind of not the point. The point is that you want to show. You don't want somebody to come and look at your data viz and have to read all over again. That's really not the point. So as much as possible, try to show without too many words. Um, prioritize typography. This is a big one. You can really change how professional and beautiful your charts look by just picking the right kind of fonts. So definitely pay attention. I'll see some charts that have three different fonts in the legend, on the axis, on the title, and that's, it's just not very pleasing to look at. So definitely think about what fonts you're using whenever you create um, a data viz. Uh, this is another big one. Use a simple color scheme. Do not use more than about four colors in your charts, otherwise it becomes quite difficult to look at. And we have a tool that you guys can use. It's called coolors.co, and it helps you generate color schemes. So it's a free website. You just go to coolors.co, and then it generates different colors for you, and it has the, the, the hex code of the colors at the bottom. And you can just press the space bar, and it gives you more different types of color combinations. So for example, if you wanted to use this purple color because it's in your logo, then you can lock that color, and then the other colors keep changing to show you colors that look well with that color. So definitely keep it in mind, no more than four colors on your data viz. Okay, don't do 3D. It doesn't add anything to your chart, and in fact, it takes away from your chart, especially 3D on a pie chart, because the increase in volume Hi, Nima. Seems we lost you. Hello. Yes, the voice is gone. Right. Um, just give us a second um, so Nima can rejoin. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Nima. Hello? Hello, Nima. I can hear you. Hello, Wairimu. Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear.
as Nima comes back on. Okay. Not yet. Yes, it's up now. Okay, great. So Nima was talking about uh, not using these three things and absolutely no no because it's difficult in terms of um, proportion which one is bigger. And I think it actually takes away from how people perceive information. So Yes, we can. Okay, great. So the last point is to clean it up. Make sure you don't have too many unnecessary things within the chart. So if you look at this, you can actually get rid of all these grid lines. So just make it cleaner to reduce the noise within the graph. And uh, you can even reduce, like, let's say for the legends, you can make them smaller. And uh, this is unnecessary. You can actually put all this information within the title and just make the graph very clean. And um, you see this one starts from 0 to 30. You can also reduce. You can have it 0, 10, 20, and 30. Just make sure it's, um, it's not too confusing. Reduce the, the amount of clutter within the graph itself. This, uh, this as well. So if you want to convey specific information and maybe you want to focus on one particular area, um, don't use too many conflicting colors within the chart. So if, if this is what you want to convey, just, you can just bold this and add color to it and then use the color and just gray them out. So you see it reduces the noise within the chart itself. Please remember your legends because they're the ones that give information to the person uh, looking at your graphic or your chart. So make sure you include them. Uh, to make it easy to understand exactly what it is you're talking about. So if you look at this one, for example, um, this is too busy and you can always add this information into the chart itself so that people don't have to move from one bar, then look at the legend, then move from the other bar and look at the legend. You can actually input all that information within the legend itself to make it easier to understand and consume that information. Uh, and that's about it. So if anyone has questions, please feel free to ask. Sorry about the connectivity. There was an issue with Nima's uh, connection, but please feel free to ask questions. Well, thank you. Thank you, um, Wairimu. Thank you, Nima. I'm hoping you can join us. So, um, so let me just quickly look through um, one question between Flourish and this is a question from Clement. So, in terms of usability, um, so I've used both and both give quite a bit of flexibility. So depending on what you want to visualize, I like Flourish when I want to use animated information. So it's, and I want people to explore that information in some way. I like to use Flourish for that reason. For infogram, when I'm doing static um, infographics and data visualizations, I prefer to use infogram for that, for that purpose. So if you want more interactivity, I think Flourish is the way to go. Infogram, if you want static uh, infographics and data visualizations, I think it offers more in terms of uh, usability and flexibility. Uh, in terms of cost, it's not prohibitive. So, for example, uh, the one we currently, let me see, I think it's about $24 a month. So, for a year, you, you'd be looking about um, 
uh, $600 a year, approximately. So depending on, and, and of course that varies how many users you want to have. Um, so uh, obviously the webinar, so there's this question from Jane. So she asks, uh, prior to the design of the infographic, can you walk us through conceptualization stage, which is the most difficult? I agree with you, Jane. Conceptualization actually takes more time. Uh, but for this webinar, it was more of an introduction. So we do do more in-depth uh, trainings uh, around data visualization. Uh, so those ones, because it takes a bit longer to actually go through, we have to look at the person's data, understand what it is they want to communicate, and also understand who the audience, who do they want to communicate with, and what their desired outcome is uh, with the data visualization. So that's more of a longer process and not possible within this one hour webinar, and it varies from case to case. The, um, so yeah, that, that we can discuss further if you're interested in more in-depth trainings around data visualization. Um, yes, uh, this is a question from Pharma. Yes, um, we do do trainings uh, on data visualization and uh, other data topics. And uh, it's a conversation we can have after this. What else? Other questions? What approach is recommended in integrating data viz into Microsoft Word? Document that, that is within longer reports versus database for freestanding communications products. Um, so if you're using words, uh, specifically words, you'd have to download them as an, an, as an image and embed them onto your Word document. So, so for example, um, if I wanted to download the one I've just created, this one, I would download it as an image, so as a PNG file or as a JPEG file. Then I copy it and paste it onto my Word document. Of course, it won't have the same interactivity and it will lose some part of the resolution. The fidelity of the, the graphic is going to be lost uh, a bit, but I, I still think it can work. So you create it within, uh, within another tool, then you just uh, import it onto your Word document. Um, and the other question, I think... Can I also jump in on that question, Marimu? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I think um, keeping, because when you have a longer document, I think keeping one cohesive story also really helps. So using the same theme, so the same color scheme, you know, throughout the document and um, having it as one long ongoing story, I think can help it feel more integrated into that document that you're using compared when you're having something that's smaller and you have it more packed with different visualizations. Cool. Were there any other questions? I can't see them on my side. Um, so I was just answering. She was asking the, um, how to integrate data visualization into Microsoft Word. So Microsoft has very limited use, in I mean, limited features when it comes to data visualization. So it would be prudent to actually create the visualization in another tool download it as a, a PNG or a JPEG file, then paste it onto your Word document. Um, yes, I think that's all the questions that we had. Yeah. Kobina, I think uh, we're done with questions. No, hi, hi, Warimu. There, there are a couple of questions. Um, there's one from, actually, there's one from um, Chongo who's saying that Nima referred to the fact that information uploaded on some of the websites, e.g., uh, Tableau is public. Does this depend on whether the website access is free or paid? Um, there's somebody also asking Kwame is that I did not understand your explanation. Yeah on 3D, so I guess maybe you can sort of like um, address those two. Yeah, sure. So your question, Chongo, that is true. So if you opt for free versions, then that usually comes with you having to share your data on public spaces. And that's exactly what's going on with Tableau. So if you get the paid version of Tableau, then what if it is private and it doesn't go on to this? And it's very much because they're saving your information on their server, and of course some people don't want it to so that's another service. And the explanation of 3D, 
is, so example, if you have a sphere compared to a circle, when something is 3D, the volume increases more than the increase in the arc. So if you have a 3D pie chart, the bigger your arc is, it's much bigger than it actually is because more the, because the volume is increasing. That's the science behind it, but the actual reason is just that it is just difficult to look at and to ascertain what is the angle and what is the arc of a pie chart when it's 3D. So whatever's behind looks smaller and whatever's in front looks bigger because of the volume. So it's you would basically be cheating your audience in some way by using a 3D pie chart. Um, but yeah. Yep, exactly. So someone has said Microsoft Power BI is a powerful analytical analytic tool in the same class with Tableau. In fact, both are market leaders ahead of IBM and Oracle. All right, any other questions? Are you going to share the recording of the webinar? Yes, I believe so on the iDev website. We have another question. How influential can data visualization be to accrue online audience engagement in community learning? And I think this is a great question for Wairimu because she can actually tell you her firsthand experience of how her engagement in social media changed after she started using these infographics. So Wairimu, I'll let you answer that. Okay, thank you, Mark, for the question. Yes, it does. It's quite influential in uh, building online engagement so for example like for Afrobarometer um, a lot of a lot of times people were not understanding uh, uh, the data so it was much much easier to visualize it and when we started to visualize it using infographics and uh, different data visualizations the engagement on not just social media even the use of the website and people asking questions around different topics grew exponentially so like in from around 2017, the audience grew fourfold. So we moved from around 4,000 4, users to about 16,000 where we currently are right now. So it's definitely critical because it helps people consume the information in a way that is easy to digest and understand with learning. So if you want to convey certain points using infographics and visualization, good way to engage your audience using a uh, database or the use of infographics. I think there are no more questions. Um, so there's a question here from uh, Corbena. How long are your trainings? So it depends. So we offer different types of trainings. Uh, the one on data visualization can take anywhere between two to three days, depending on the data that the, um, the trainees are using for that specific training. So it's anywhere between two to three days. So we walk them how to actually collect the data, how to analyze it, and obviously now how to conceptualize and then visualize it and where to share it. to add that Microsoft BI is a free tool and can be downloaded. Well, the, I'm not sure whether they have a free version because I know the Microsoft BI is an enterprise solution and you would have to pay for it. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, do we have any more questions? Okay, well, it appears, it appears um, there are no more questions. So um, let me again use this opportunity to first and foremost thank Nima and Wairimu. Uh, I think this has been a very insightful presentation and I'm sure that all the participants who took time to join us did learn something. 
Um, I also like to use the opportunity to thank all the participants who joined this. Um, some of you who joined earlier than um, the 10 o'clock, but did stay with us till time and stay throughout the presentation. It's been really, really insightful having you and the questions um, really did go a long way to make this a very excellent and insightful presentation. I'd like to, since I have everybody online, to also inform you that our next webinar will be on the 26th of July on participatory evaluation. And it'll be presented, the presenters will be Latifa Kamara and Carla Silva. Um, we're gonna send out a notice very soon and I'm hoping that you will all be able to join us. So Wairimu, uh, Nima, thank you again. And thanks to everybody for joining us. We really appreciate these discussions and you making it as exciting as it is. Thanks. Thank you for having us. You're welcome.